Have you ever wondered what's the difference between a mass grave, a pauper's grave, and a company grave? Now today I'm going to meet Andy Joyce. He's a volunteer at the Undercliff Cemetery and he's a bit of an expert on these type of graves because they always associate mass graves, pauper's graves, and these type of graves when there's a war, when there's a conflict. But uh, little did I know the other day, Undercliff is full of company graves. So Andy is going to talk a bit about company graves and show us a couple of examples in detail. Well, this is uh, one of the cemetery's company graves. Um, so I've just kind of outlined it for you. So basically, it's this, all this bit here is what we call a company grave. So it's like a bit of a triangle there, yeah? It is, yeah. yeah. Obviously, it would be, you know, oblong, you know. Right. So, yeah. Okay, so what's the history behind it? Well, it seems to be, sorry, it's like in amongst other graves. It is, yeah. I mean, uh, this is, uh, uh, as I say, a company grave. And it was first opened in June 1891 and it closed in August 1891. So what we're looking about eight weeks, two months. Okay. Um, it was here. Uh, but this was placed here without any of the surrounding uh, burials, if you like, knowing. Right. It is quite awkward to uh, manoeuvre around here. It is. It is. It's all very unstable now. Right. Yeah. So what do we have, have inside the actual land? Well, inside this uh, grave we have 66 people. 66? 66. So they include adults, uh, children, minors and stillborns. Right. So it's like a, a bit of a mass grave, you could say, can't you, really? It is, yeah, it is, but they're, they're kind of singular rather than all, you know, spread out into a, in a, into a bigger group that you would normally associate with, uh, right. you know, mass graves. Okay, and I uh, don't know what details you've got. How, do you know who's buried here? Can, give us a, just an overall picture of the ages and maybe some of the occupations. Yeah, sure. I mean, I've got a list here. So the first uh, person we have interred here is... Um, a young girl actually uh, and she was called uh, Mary Ellen Riley and she was eight years old and the cost for her funeral was uh, 13 shillings right um, so she's the first and then we have several other people so we have widows another Mary Ellen she's 55 uh, and then we have a James Henry Ingham he's 54 he's a painter right uh, and then yeah Iron moulders, uh, wool combers, spinsters, warp dressers. Um, so yeah, good. You know, there's a variation really of you know the people here. So the other thing I wanted to ask you, Andy, is um, how, how long? And you may have mentioned it, how long it's been open for. And was it one of those where they kept opening the uh, the land or the pit, if you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this would have just been constantly open it wouldn't have been uh, closed at all so what they would have done is um, buried the person but you need to remember that the uh, majority of people or all of the people they wouldn't have been able to afford coffins right so you would never get 66 coffins in this small space yeah so they would have been buried probably wrapped up in cloth okay and then uh, placed in the grave uh, and then a very, very uh, light layer of soil placed over. Um, so when the, it was time for the next funeral, you couldn't actually see there was another body there. It just looked as if the grave had been yeah. dug and then they would just repeat the process. Yeah. Um, with children, what you would get is they would probably place them one at the top, one at the bottom, uh, so in terms of length. Uh, and same with uh, stillborns, they would be placed one next to the other. So when that kind of level was filled, yeah. then they would cover it up. But each time covering what they'd already, you know, the person they'd already buried. Right. So, yeah. But how you get 66 people yeah, is that, amazing. That, that's a fascinating thing. We don't really know how deep it's been dug in. We don't know. No, there's no record, but... <sighs> Looking at it, it would have to be at least 10 to 12 foot. 
Right. But most graves would be about eight foot deep. Yeah. But there's no, no records to suggest that they went any deeper. Um, and if they didn't go any deeper, then how does you know, decomp uh, decomposition take place? I see. So I see. you've got the theory then of um, lime, which there would have been plenty of supply of because there was a, a stonemason's yard on site as well. Yeah. So that's one possibility, but really we just, we just don't know. Yeah. So I'm just going to walk around because I bet quite a lot of people have walked past here and you just wouldn't know. I oh, know, you wouldn't know it was here, no. 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 So this is the actual path. Yeah. And what section is this again? Uh, this is unsecre unconsecrated um, K section. There. And they're making use of spare land, like you said. Um, Literally, this is, you know, um, I mean, it wasn't really a money-making scheme because no. they wouldn't really have got much money from it. No. Um, in the early 1850s, the, the charge for a, an adult burial was six shillings, um, five shillings for a child, a shilling for a stillborn. And then obviously, as the years go on, that price increases until you get to the 1890s where a child is 13 shillings, an adult is 16 shillings, yeah. and a stillborn is five shillings. So, um, but the, the, in total, I think there was, this, well, in old money, it was about 26 pound. Right. Was yeah. raised from uh, the Brills yeah. here. It's really sad because people are just fascinated with this stuff because they'd relate mass graves or multiple bodies in a war situation. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but it's just fascinating some of the background yeah, of this piece of land. Well, it is. I mean, yeah. this is it. It's, it's just, as I say, you, you would never know. No, you would never know no, it was no. here. Yeah. And, you know, this is, uh, you know, replicated over the cemetery as well. Yeah. Not as many as this. I mean, 66 no. is the biggest one we have. It's the biggest one. Uh, but we do have, you yeah. know, somewhere there's, you know, 10, 12, 20 in. Because mm. um, I've so, seen yeah. the plan, uh, is it the Q section where there's, uh, yeah. there's hundreds, of, well, not hundreds, but there's so many, you know, Oh yeah, Q section. Oh, yeah, it, it's. I would say at least half of half of that. But I mean, taking this section just K on its own, uh, we've got just over. I think it's nine, nine and a half thousand uh, graves in in this section in unconsecrated. Right. Uh, sorry, and nine hundred, nearly a thousand, are company graves. Right. So you multiply how many people you get in a grave gives you an idea. Yeah. Just how many people are buried in them. So that's, this is one example. Have you got another one nearby? Yeah, we've one just around the corner, yeah, which is a bit uh, smaller one. So we're at a different part of the cemetery, just a, about a minute's walk, if that. That's right, yeah, just around the corner from the previous one. Right, OK, what do we have here? So here we have another company grave, um, and you actually wouldn't know it was here. Um, but the grave itself isn't aligned with all the others, as you can see, all the other ones are kind of all lined, whereas here we have, I um, think it's five company graves. So we've got the corner here, coming around this side. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, and the fifth one is just behind me. So literally, it's the two graves there. What you have is, if you do a kind of a square, that is where you've got your, um, your company grave, and it would actually be facing in that direction. All right, so you've got this, that, am I correct, that one? That one, and then there's another one. So just go a bit yeah. further up for so It just up. follows the uh, corner around. Right. So, so that would be here, round yeah. about there, the last one, yeah. And the last one on this side would be, would be here. This one here? Yeah. So this does, is, does that explain why the land's a bit... Yeah, yeah, it yeah. will do. But obviously, this obviously you're on the side of a path as well, so yeah. that uh, makes it uh, a bit more difficult. Um, so yes, yeah, so these five lie at the feet of all the other, all the other graves there. Again, you could just be walking by and literally, yeah. And you would just really. assume yeah. those are the graves, and, and that's yeah. it. And this is just a bit of uh, spare land. But actually, you just think a headstone, you've got a grave with yeah. it, and that's about it, really. But there's so much. Yeah. Not vacant land, but unmarked land with bodies yeah. in, you know? Oh, yeah, this, yeah. I mean, this one here, uh, the other one we had 66. In this one, we've got um, 16. So we've got five... This, this one here, Literally, yep. just this bit here. Right. So we have five adults, eight children, and three stillborns. 
right. in this one. Yeah. So it gives you a bit of a comparison to the smaller ones we have uh, with the interments and obviously the bigger one with the 66 in. Again, company graves. Yeah, I mean, a com I mean, when the cemetery was set up, it was Bradford Cemetery Company. Um, so hence why you have company graves. So the purpose of the company graves were basically for those who couldn't really afford to have their own grave. Um, so what you would get then is you would have people uh, obviously buried here uh, and that would be their final resting place. But they didn't, the, the, the people who were uh, burying people didn't own a grave. They couldn't afford to own I a see. grave because so you, yeah. you had to buy the freehold. Well, that was really yeah. expensive. Um, so they would then use um, the company graves for those who um, uh, obviously couldn't afford to buy their own. Yeah. Um, a lot, lots of people think as well they're kind of pauper's graves. So there's a bit of... Confusion, isn't com there? Yeah. There is a little bit, but I can understand why. Because in here they're called company graves, whereas if you go to the council uh, cemeteries, they're called pauper graves. Okay. And the reason they're called pauper graves is because... It was either the workhouse or the local district paid for the burial. Yeah, yeah. Um, but saying that, in some of the company graves, we do have the workhouse has paid for the burial of, of, of people. Right. So I suppose the, the two really kind of intertwined a bit. But yeah, company graves because Bradford Cemetery Company. It's only about a few weeks back I've heard of, first time I heard of the terminology, you know, company graves. Yeah. It's usually pauper graves in the back of your mind. Yeah, this yeah. is it. And of course, with it, I suppose, yeah. being a, a company as well, it's a natural thing to Yeah, do. so, I mean, we don't know what the plans are, but it'd be really nice eventually, depending on the undercliff, you know, management, to have these marked at some point. I don't know. Yeah, I think, well, I think, well, a lot of them we actually, you can't get to. I mean, you know, you only got to look over there, that section. So you've got O section over there. Yeah. It's like a complete forest. Um, so it's very, very difficult to get them. And I think... I think ideally it would be impossible to mark every single one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think maybe in the future, you know, they may decide, I know there was talk about it, yeah. about just having one memorial yeah. to all those buried, you know, maybe in the company grave. Yeah. So in that way, uh, respecting yeah. uh, their I was going to say a mark of respect. Yeah. And the good thing about this is they're identified as well. You've got the names and everything, you know. Names, ages, yeah. addresses, yeah. occupations. Um, and this is kind of a little... Uh, an interest for me, I kind of got quite a lot of uh, information on company graves and I'm kind of making it a little project. Good, good. Yeah, I've done um, a few mass graves and pauper's graves before, but not in such detail. Mm. To have detail is, is just fascinating. Yeah, I mean, normally in, in a mass grave, you wouldn't have the details of who's buried Correct, there. Correct, yeah, yeah. So I know, sort of like at bowling, when they've moved them from uh, the cathedral, for example, you've no record, you just no. have, you know, so many boxes, etc whereas here we know exactly who is buried names addresses occupations and how much they paid right so thanks very much andy i mean andy's been on our channel was it last year sometimes yeah About last year time yeah. flies and we did a video on um call it abandoned grave on leeds road we were asking for volunteers and a help uh, how did you get along with that we've got quite a lot of views but people are showing interest oh there's lots and yeah. lots of interest in I mean, I'm working with the council at the moment and, oh yeah, we need to get it going and we need to do this and that. But it, it's, yeah, feet on we the need ground. the action. We need the feet, action feet now the rather end, yeah. than just the words. So uh, hopeful, I mean, we are making steady, slow progress. Yeah. Um, but hopefully once the, yeah. you know, the better weather comes again, we can yeah. actually get cracking on I suppose on it's it. the awareness first, you know, a step well, at a time. It. Yeah. this is it, yeah. But you know. yeah, I'll put that link in the description. So if, if any of our viewers are watching this, please do watch that video and uh, spread the message. Again, Andy, thanks very much. Thank you.